<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome to class. This is a um, restore mindful movements and meditation. Uh, lots of stretches, a slow moving class. Um, and I was thinking that sometimes, uh, or somehow, oh, hi, Candace. Come on in. Hello. Hi there. Hi, Candace. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Candace? Sorry, everyone. I'm just going to pause the recording for a second. We'll be right back. Okay, so uh, we're back here and uh, and welcome again um, to our our class and we're, I was just getting started just to uh, introduce just a little bit of um, having just a, a chance to appreciate all of the things that it um, that kind of just worked out that that we could be here whenever time it is that you're joining the class, whether you're here live or whether you're tuning in later, that just just having some um, some gratefulness, some awareness of things that we we take for granted, um, that time wise, and that we have the space, and that we have this this crazy online ability to connect with each other and to um, join in in a, a class like this to um, train our uh, our skills of of mindfulness and heal our bodies. So um, some of the things that we take for granted that seem ordinary, that are just absolutely miraculous is what I've been working on this week. Things that we take for granted, even just a breath, a single breath is something that somebody else is praying for. So yeah, to start us off, um, this is a good class to have some props can have some sort of a, a band or belt that you can use and a blanket or a towel it can be rolled up or folded up a couple of pillows I have I have these things in my space so if you want to take the time to to grab those to make yourself more comfortable we are going to start sitting for a little bit We've had some, uh, lots of uh, moon, full moon and, and things that uh, shake up our, our uh, nervous systems a little bit. So uh, we'll, we're gonna start the class uh, sitting and, and having some integrating body, mind and soul uh, with some breath. So just find a seat that's comfortable for you. I've got a chair. You might be sitting up on a cushion or the edge of a, a couch or your bed. And just know also that we've come to have this idea, a lot of us, that being um, slowing down, being still, being in meditation should feel good or feel calm or like we're dropping anxiety or clearing our minds. And that's a complete lie. Uh, so if that's not happening for you, it's totally okay. What we're actually doing is we're just learning to train to be okay with what actually is happening, what we are feeling in our, in our mental uh, landscape as well as, as in our bodies. So we're not doing anything wrong. <laughs> and so you might be sitting with your eyes closed or open I named those things, mind, heart, soul, or mind, heart, and body, just to put labels on them, because we do feel these things are separate, but they're really all part of just inhabiting being conscious beings, inhabiting these forms.
So coming to sit and know that you're sitting, feeling the feet on the floor or your seat on the chair or the cushion and wherever the hands are resting in the lap, just allow yourself to feel uh, dignified, but also relaxed. So there's a little bit of organizing to have the posture and the head supported by the shoulders and the spine. You might do a bit of a scan through the body as you sit and notice where you may be feeling some tenderness or tension in a particular area, might be the face or the hips, low back, whatever it is for you to start to open up to feeling. And if there's nothing in particular, that's fine. You can allow your awareness to just rest in the feet, feeling the contact with the floor, just starting with those parts of the body that are maybe not as triggering the feet and the hands, any sensations that you can feel there, including <laughs> having some difficulty feeling these body parts. Notice if there's a emotional quality or a tone to your experience right now. And what's happening in the mind allowing that to be okay. So we're not clearing the mind. It's the mind produces thoughts and tries to solve problems. And that's why it's called a stream of stream of thoughts or a train of thoughts. I'll just give that a little bit of space and friendliness. And then notice that the, the breath is here. It's happening. John Kabat-Zinn, who's a renowned father of, of uh, North American mindfulness practice, scientist, doctor, professor emeritus, uh, says that uh, taking just one breath cycle with awareness is a radical act of sanity. So that's it. That's all, just taking one breath drawing the tension towards the inhale and the exhale. And then do that again. Seeing if you can get engaged, curious, but also staying light about this breath right now, just letting it be your natural breath, following the sensations of expanding and dissolving. Good, and then let's take a few breaths and I'm gonna lead us into a, a counted breath. So just as best you can, following along with that, but if you need to do something different, that's okay. So let's finish the exhale. And then we'll breathe in for four, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, Four, pausing at the top. And exhale, two, three, four. A little pause there again. Breathing in for four. Staying on full briefly. And then a slow exhale, just taking your time. A couple more of those. sensations and sounds that are attached to the lungs moving in this manner. Good. 
And then just let your breath return to something that is more neutral. You can notice any of the effects that may be happening or what's in your awareness as we do some of these exercises. What we do is some alternate nostril breathing as a way to uh, balance the nervous system and both sides of the brain. So let your <clears throat> right thumb come to your right nostril and just close that off a little bit, just gently where that nostril flares, just close that off. And then just try that breathing in through the left nostril and breathing out through the left nostril. We'll take about eight breaths, breathing in through the left, keeping the right closed off and exhaling through the left. That's two, inhaling left, And exhaling left, three, inhale. Exhale, four, inhale, five, in, six, in, seven, Inhale, eight, and release the right nostril. You can take your ring finger over to the left nostril. If it's hard to hold uh, your arms up, then you can use your left hand to kind of tuck underneath the right elbow. Uh, maybe a clearing breath here first, breathing in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. And then close off the left nostril where it flares as you breathe in through the right side and breathe out through the right side. In through the right and out through the right. Inhale. Exhale. Five more, inhaling. Exhaling five, inhale, four, breathing in, three, in, two, inhale, and exhale, release the right hand. And have your eyes closed or open as you let your breath come in and out through both sides of the sinus. Just noticing anything you notice, maybe a little more clarity, removing some of the fog in the brain. Maybe not. And let's roll out the shoulders a few times. Let's bring the shoulders up to the ears, around and down the back. Squeeze and release. in both directions. And then just slow that down. Let's do a few of uh, what I've been enjoying is this neck uh, movement and massage. So dropping your gaze over the right shoulder, using your right hand to reach around to the left shoulder or around towards the back of the neck and just giving a press there and then bringing the right palm, dragging it across over to the right side of your chest as you look towards the left. And do that a couple of times, looking to the right and then dragging your hand across the left shoulder and down across the right side of the chest as you look to the left. Massage, some gentle pressure across that side of the neck. You can decide how much and do that one more time, looking right as you reach left, and looking left as the hand comes to the right. Good, other side, so bring your left hand, you're gonna to look to the left, bring your left hand to reach around to the back of the right side of the neck, shoulder area. Just give yourself a little squeeze there. As you look down to the left, press firmly the palm on that diagonal across your chest and start to look over the right. Again, look left as you reach back, 
firm pressure across the, the throat, the collarbones, down towards the left side of the chest as you look right. In some way that this makes sense, it feels interesting in your body right now. And a couple more of those. Good, come back through center. Let's let the arms come to the sides and just do a big reach up and look up towards the hands, inhale. And exhale, let the hands come out and down, just dangling to the sides. Reach up on the inhale, big wide swoop with the arms and exhale to take it down. And reach it up again, inhale. Filling the back lungs and then exhale. Let's bring the fingertips to the tops of the shoulders now. Take the elbows wide, maybe squeeze them back a little bit here and just let the chin be level with the floor. We're gonna circle the elbows forward towards each other and then open to the sides and around the back a little. Elbows squeeze together, find that curve in the upper back and then inhale, open. Exhale, almost like you're coming into a cat spine, so some flexion there and then the extension as you lift the heart Maybe look up and once more in this direction. Spread the elbows, spread the arms now, flipping the palms up towards the ceiling and then flipping the hands down or even back a little bit. Open it up, moving from the shoulder and then exhale to close that off. Let's open it up here, inhale. And exhale, close it off. Reach the hands around to clasp behind the back or you can hook the thumbs or if like me, you're on a chair, then just send the breastbone high. Use the sides or back of the chair to lift the heart. Feel the shoulder blades moving together for three, two, and one. Just cross the right knee over the left knee, squeeze your inner thighs together and take your left hand towards your outer right thigh. Take the right arm up, forward, and then reach it back behind you as you use your left hand to give a little bit of leverage. If it's too much to cross at the legs, you can just have both feet on the floor and you're looking to the side or looking over the right shoulder for three. Spinning the palm to the ceiling for two. And one, bring it back to center. Take the right elbow underneath the left elbow and give yourself a hug. You can keep your knees crossed if you have that. Or eagle shape the arms there and fill in the back of the heart with a breath. Exhale, take the chin towards the chest, the elbows towards the thighs, and then lift up on the inhale. Exhale, chin to chest. And once more, inhale. And exhale, peel the belly back. Release the arms, uncross the legs. Just give it a few shrugs with the shoulders, breathing in. And drop it. Inhale. Exhale. Once more. Ah. <sighs> Let's bring the hands now up and to the back of the skull, taking the elbows wide again. Feet, both feet on the floor now. We'll do a few kayak movements. So dipping the elbows like they're the ends of paddles into the water, and keeping the seat, the pelvis as an anchor. And these movements can be pretty small, revolving, rotating the spine side to side or in these figure eight loops, eyes open or closed. Try to change direction with that. Maybe noticing spots where it's difficult to move or even to coordinate your brain to keep going in that direction. Let's take it back to center, inhale, spread the fingers, palms face the ceiling and then palms flip down again, open up. 
And then take the palms down. Let's reach back again to hold the sides of the chair or just fingertips on the floor if you're sitting on the ground. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the shoulder blades. If your hands are close together, you can clasp them or hook the thumbs in the opposite direction for three, two, and one. Let's cross the left knee over the right knee. And then reach both arms up, inhale. Right arm, right hand comes to the left thigh and left arm reaches around behind. Wrapping the right ribs around, but keeping the right uh, or left side of the hip energetically pressing down and reaching a little forward. As you look to the side and keep spinning the left palm to the ceiling for three, two, and one, back through center, left elbow over the right elbow. Give yourself a hug. Let's walk the hands back a little and sit tall, fill into the upper back. You're breathing right into the center of the heart. Eagle shape the arms is an option, lifting the elbows a little bit higher up. And then chin to chest, exhale. Inhale, lift the elbows, a little arch in the upper back. Exhale, chin to chest, into that cat. And once more, lift. And lower. Release the arms. Uncross the legs. And just pause for a moment. Coming back to sitting neutral and feeling the effects. So rub the hands together now. Create some energy, some warmth. Our mind is really active. We can just bring our attention into specific body parts just to be present. So just let your arms be at your sides with your palms facing up. Feeling any sensations that are coming in the hands right now, tingling or temperature change. Then let's flip the palms down. So have the elbows just right at your sides. Let's spread the fingers wide and then bring them back together. So scissoring the fingers, just an opening and closing, working on those little muscles of the hands that we also can take for granted that are uh, working in the garden, in the kitchen, and texting and typing. And then flip the palms towards each other and do that same thing. Just a scissor squeeze, open and close. <laughs> Bring your left fingertips on top of your right fingertips and create a, a sphere shape between your, your hands and press, press, press. Make feel some work in the shoulders and maybe in the face. And then switch it over. So uh, other fingerprints, fingernails go on top of the other side. Maybe noticing one arm, shoulder or neck working more than the other. And release the hands. Do a couple circles of the wrists. Let's take the left palm and press it forward like a stop sign. You can have the elbow bent and use your right hand to just press back as you press forward. It's like we're in, a, almost like we're in a, um, a plank or a chaturanga pose if we were on the ground. And the other side, so right elbow dangles or whichever arm you're using. Give a press with the opposite hand so you get a stretch for the wrist. Good. And then let's take the arms forward and just dangle them and let the fingers track down towards the floor. Tuck the thumbs just inside the palm there, reaching down through the fingers, maybe making a little fist here to stretch out the backs of the wrists, pressing the, the uh, backs of the wrists, the backs of the hands forward. Nice, and then just some loose guitar strumming type of hands. Shake, 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 little piano. Making some music. How about some uh, figure eight loops with each of your fingers, including the thumb, just one at a time, little figure eight loops. And then flicking, 
flicking each finger, flicking raindrops, all of the fingers, just release. Good, let's uh, come down onto our mats now. And so have your props around. Coming down onto the mat. Let's take the soles of the feet together to start. You might like to sit up on something, blanket or pillow, so that the soles of the feet can be together and the um, legs are quite long. So you've got quite a space between your heels and your center line. If you have pillows, it can feel nice to place them underneath your thighs. And then let your head drape forward, resting your, your elbows on your thighs or shins. You could be sitting up taller or holding onto your feet in some way, just to have this flexion in the spine. Maybe some sensations coming in the lower back as you just allow the breath to travel into that area. And so if it's helpful to bring some ease to the mind, then like we did in the beginning, you could count the, uh, the length of each half of the breath cycle. Making any adjustments if you need to, just getting some perspective as to how the body is feeling, that there's no pain in this posture. Otherwise, adjust, add, add more height to the, the knees or adjust where the legs are. And take about a minute here. You can follow the breath, or you can open to the field of hearing. Any of the senses coming into awareness or disciplines, training, focal points. Train our attention. So that when we do need to be rational to access those higher centers of the brain when we're, when we're off our mats, when we're out in the world, we can do that more easily. Let's take three more breaths here. One, two, and three, drawing back up to take a seat. You might keep uh, one of the pillows there. Let's, let's have the left leg stay in that bent position and bring the right leg forward. It might be off to the side a little bit, and you could also, you could have a pillow underneath that as well. That leg does not want to go straight. So we're taking a version of Janu Shirshasana. And let your fingertips be kind of come behind the back so you get a little bit of um, space, a little more space there. And we're gonna to start to revolve the left side of the rib cage so that we're lining up over top of that extended leg. And just looking towards the right toes. You can walk your hands forward if that feels okay. Adjust your props. You could also, other, other ways to do this would be to have a pillow on top of your right thigh. Just experiment with what you have in your space and what serves the body so that the hamstring isn't getting an overstretch or that the 
area behind the knees is not, the ligaments are not stretching. It's a bit of a twist in this posture. Let's take five breaths here. You can just let the right foot be floppy. Two more. Start to bring yourself back up. Let's take the cushion out from underneath the left uh, knee shin area if you had one and lean into your left hand, press into your left shin and let your hips lift, press the whole right foot to the floor and reach the right arm beyond your space. So you're gonna stretch out of that whole right side body for three, two, and one. Lower that down. And we'll switch sides. So the left leg comes forward. It can be straight forward, but I like a little diagonal, different variations. And then if you like something, some support for the right knee to start. We're gonna be turning our rib cage to face towards the left leg and if it's better to have a pillow underneath that leg or roll it up and give yourself some height. Lots of different ways to support yourself here, inhabit your body, stay close with your experience. Maybe counting those breaths or the length of the inhale to three or four. Same thing with the exhale. The thought stream is flowing. And we're just making some space for that to be okay. Softening, dissolving any tension, any of the muscles that might be working, perhaps in the face that don't need to be. For three more breaths on this side. And let's come back up on an inhale. Taking out any of the props. Leaning a little to the right on the diagonal into the right hand, or it could be the right elbow. The forearm can be on the ground as you start to press into your right shin, the left foot, and then reach beyond your space. Just letting the head dangle for three, two, and one. Let's bring that back down. Take uh, both legs and have them wide and just drop the knees over from side to side. Do a few of those windshield wiper movements. Good. Let's take uh, ourselves now to our <clears throat> hands and knees. You can use one of those pillows or you can roll up your Blanket if you have that. It's going to be up towards the top third of your mat. Let's do a couple of uh, just loosening up the hips, some circles of the hips though. So on fists or fingertips or blocks if you like to use those as you swing side to side. Cleaning out the contents of the jar with some barrel rolls, lifting the belly up on one side and down on the other. And changing direction. Belly lifts, ribs move out. A few cat and cow, heart moves forward and back. You could shift the, uh, your whole 
torso forward and back as you do that, coming closer towards a child's pose. And then with that roll or pillow in front, let's take the elbows to that and have the elbows a little bit narrow. Start to wiggle your hips back. Let your head fall between your arms. If you can bring your elbows a little closer together, you don't have to have that uh, pillow or towel roll there, but it just gets a little deeper into that stretch underneath the armpits. I'm pressing my fingers together behind my head in that sphere shape. Just the fingerprints are evenly pressing together or prayer hands behind the head or just let your hands be kind of in your fingertips in the neck area. Your forehead might come down, it might not. And some natural breaths coming along the sides of the body. Breathing in through the very base of the pelvis and breathing out through the crown of the head. Breathing back in through the crown of the head down the spine, back of the heart, and exhaling through the base of the pelvis. Inhaling through the pelvis, exhaling through the crown of the head. And once more, breathing in crown, and breathing out to clear all the energy centers along the spine. Start to bring yourself up. Can move it into another cat or back to sit on your heels for a moment. Having some flexion in the spine, a variation of a child's pose. And then we'll look forward and shift forward. So that blanket roll, we can use it again. And this time we'll lie down on our tummy and position the blanket roll or pillow so that it's just at the, um, the lower region of the rib cage or underneath the bra line or heart rate monitor line, just shift the hips from side to side. So an, enough of a, a height that it feels supportive, but if you do are feeling pain in the lower back, then it may be too high. You may want to adjust or take it away or walk your elbows further forward is a really nice one, so the elbows are a ways in front of the shoulders, just holding opposite elbows. Sometimes it's nice to put um, a block or something under the forehead, or you can uh, have your thumbs come between your eyebrows so the weight of the head doesn't have to be what's calling your attention. And so choose your Supported back bend that allows you to breathe with some ease. Should not feel like effort. Although there can be an intensity to the shape as the breath gets a, a new pathway. And shoulders that are overstretched and weary from screen time can, can find this a challenging pose for sure. So if you need to come down even lower, then rest your forehead on your, your arms in front. Still ha having the, uh, the benefits of this posture. Let's try starting over, returning to sound or breath or just the body. Awareness, the presence here, the fact that you're a conscious being. Having this experience right now including the stream of thoughts coming and going. 
pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, all part of the experience, just being present to what is. Start to take the last deep breath in and breath out. And we'll shift just over to one side or come up a little bit so you can take that roll out from underneath. You can keep it that or the pillow somewhere where you can find it. And come on to the back. Right away, just hug the knees in. And let the knees go a little bit wide here towards the armpits and take the chin over the right shoulder. Let's come back into some flow of breath. Inhale, center with the head and then exhale, chin over to the left shoulder. Inhaling, center, massaging the back of the skull, exhaling right. Again, left. Let's just do that one more time to the right side. And the left side. And then let the hands come to the kneecaps and do a few circles with your knees together. A little bit like we did with the elbows, just these other extremities, these limbs. Weight of the heels just heavy, stirring the femur bones and the hip sockets. And reverse. Holding the shins or underneath the thighs and just rocking from elbow to elbow. Let's let the left leg move down the mat now. It can be straight or bent. And Hug the right knee in. You can uh, hold behind your hamstring or on top of the shin with your hands or with your strap. Allow yourself to experience the breath in this shape as you circle your right ankle a few times in each direction. You'll bend the left leg and take the right heel to the ceiling and press it up. Flex up through the heel and then hug that thigh back into the chest. Then reach it up again, inhale. Then exhale, hug that thigh in. Reach up, inhale. Exhale, give it a squeeze. Shift your hips over to the right now. Let your left leg lengthen out again and start to use your left hand to guide your right knee towards the left side of your space. If you have a pillow that you'd like to add or two pillows come on underneath the right shin. Tuck the left hip underneath a little bit more and reach away with the right arm either downwards towards the hip or maybe shoulder height, or could even be in a cactus shape. You might even cradle the back of your skull, give your head a, a little bit of height. So lots of options. You can bend that bottom leg a lot as well, or even bring the knees right together. Beautiful posture to be here. Helping out the lungs, the digestive organs. Also body parts that operate through the autonomic nervous system that are easy to take for granted. Things that are working pretty well if we're here today. The luxury of processing all of the foods that we've been able to ingest. Let's take three more breaths on this side. And 
Exhale, exhale, exhale to empty. And then come on to the back. You can take a big stretch or bounce your hips. Lift and lower them a few times if you're enjoying a roll up and roll down. Before we go to the other side, I'm gonna take the, the left thigh and bring that in towards the chest a little bit to the left to so get the descending colon. Hug it in nice and tight. You can use your strap or your hands. Right leg can be bent or straightening that out. And circle out the left ankle. Spreading between the toes and point and flex. Choose the position of the right leg that feels good for the lumbar spine and then stretch the left heel to the ceiling. And hug that thigh back in. Try exhale as the leg goes up. And then inhale so you fill up and get that press of the thigh towards the belly. Exhale, heel to ceiling. Inhale, hug it in. And once more. Good, so if you have supports, have them over on the right side. Shifting the hips to the left now and starting to roll. Use your right hand to guide the left shin. Adjusting the right hip underneath a little bit more so the hips are more or less stacked. You could have just the left shin on a support, the right knee loose on the mat, or you can bend both knees and stick something between the thighs. Just taking care of this body, just like it were a, uh, a child or a good friend. Okay, checking in with all of its parts, integrating heart, mind, body. Left arm reaches away wide or down by the side or cradling the back of the head. Choosing a focal point on the tip of the nose with the eyes closed or you might just be looking at that crack on the ceiling. Just aware that there's a visual field and you're present. Staying close and intimate with your own experience. Building those skills that will translate to being able to be there for others off the mat later. Three more breaths on this side. One, two, and three. Coming back into the middle, into resetting the hips and bouncing or rolling up and down a couple times, some low bridges. Let's shake everything out, shaking the legs to the ceiling. You can add the arms if you like and really loose wiggling. Very little effort. Fluids moving back into the torso, to the heart, to the face as the legs come down. We're moving into final rest, a few moments of uh, rest and meditation. And with that, uh, the props, if you want to take this in a particular way, I've got that blanket that was rolled up a couple of times to create a shelf. This, now, this time it's for the back of the heart. Pillows or bolster down towards the bottom of your mat, something that the legs can drape over. 
And so adjusting the uh, blanket towel area so that it feels like a band-aid across the back of the heart, picking up the head and letting the back of the skull come to the floor or bringing in rolling up your mat perhaps or something else that might be there to lift the head. If it's too much underneath the back of the heart, then you can lower that height or take it out. Tuck the tailbone a little bit. Legs can be long or you can have your that wide diamond shape where the heels are close together and the knees are wide. Arms in a cactus shape. So the heart is the highest point of the, the shape by just a little bit. The belly receiving breath and there's some freedom here for the digestive organs. Allow the the window of attention to be wide open. Maybe now to let go of any particular focus on breath or sound or sight. Just keeping that window open for friendliness and curiosity just to see what is playing out here. all of those guests that are coming anyways. And so if we have that welcome mat there, there's less resistance to reality. And everything moves across the landscape here, just like the clouds or twigs in the stream nothing permanent. It's continuing to check in if the, the body's not comfortable. You can just take the traditional Shavasana without anything and resting on the back. Remembering that just one breath cycle is a radical act of sanity, taking nothing for granted. We can breathe, we're alive. If you'd like to stay for a longer time, maybe watching the recording and heading off to bed. You're welcome to do that. If you're moving on with other activities today, let's bring the awareness back into the fingers and toes, bring some movements there. Get the jaw a big stretch, open and close. <sighs> and roll over to one side. Cradle your head on your pillow or your arm. Appreciate the courage that it takes to be with and present to your own inner experience. Use your free hand to press up to take a seat. Even if you're on your own at home and you're doing this practice, know that, that others are doing the same or have been here as well. Strength of our community. Taking a moment to acknowledge and wish each other well-being. May we all be safe. May we all be 
happy, finding ease and freedom from suffering. And may our own training and practice here have its ripple effect and translate into our thoughts, actions, and ability to uh, connect and be there for others. Namaste. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Candace.